Good evening, young lady. How are you? What is it like backstage for you? Being surrounded by these incredibly talented kids. My God, they're all singing, they're twirling, they're eating fire, they're bouncing. Oh, it's incredible. <laughs> I'm walking around with a cane, and they're like, can I help you, old lady? Like, Get away from me. Do you ever do stand-up about... About the thing? The thing? <laughs> I'm transgender, for those of you who didn't know. Thank you. I do talk about it sometimes. Sometimes I don't. It's not all of who I am. That's it's good. part of who I am, you know. Right. I grew up in a town, Fairview, New Jersey, blue collar, very low income, a lot of immigrants in my town. Very macho Italian neighborhood, you know. You had to prove yourself. I was born a boy. My birth name was Richard. I really had no idea how to be a boy. I became a really good actor. And a lot of times I got by by making people laugh. I harbored the secret dream to be a comic. So I decided, all right, it's now or never. And so I went for it. What was that, like a hair growing out of my nose? <laughs> what the hell is that all about? After 20 years of doing stand-up, I finally decided to just give it up. I felt like it was just never going to happen for me. For most of my adult life, there was just sort of this emptiness inside of me. I felt like I couldn't be who I was. There were just instinctive things that I wanted to do in life that were decidedly female. When I finally understood what the issue was, it was like, bing, 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 bing. It was like a pinball machine. You know, all the lights and bells and whistles started going off, and I went, yeah. And that emptiness inside, all of a sudden, there was light there where there wasn't before. So after 11 years of being away, I decided to get back up on stage. Come on, clap for crying out loud. Oh, my comedy, when I came back, had this honesty about it. It was like explosive. And audiences began to respond to it in ways I had never seen in my previous incarnation. This is unquestionably the biggest performance of my career. So I'm going to give you the stage. Best thank of you, luck. Thank you. So a lot of people ask me, you know, they can't understand why I'm still doing this so late in life, stand-up comedy. And it's not for fame, you know. All right, little it's for fame. <laughs> but to be honest with you, the, the truth is, I need burial money. <laughs> <laughs> and I know my family's not going to do it, because they're cheap. <laughs> If I don't have enough money, my family will do it the old-fashioned way. They'll put me in a dumpster behind a Walmart. <laughs> and then they'll take all of my life insurance money, and they'll have a big party on my dime, because my family loves free food. Hey, there's my family right there. Look. My family would go to, like, an execution if they had a buffet. <laughs> and then complain about the meatballs, you know. So I'm thinking about cremation. That's what I'm looking for. You know? But I want to lose some weight first. Because I don't want my family to have to go shopping for like a plus-sized urn. And you see my sister coming out of the urn barn going, that fat man! That's my time. Thank you so much. You guys look great. Be happy, you know. Thank you. You as a person, your personality, you're very warm, you're very likable. Thank you. Reba, you are very entertaining, and you made me laugh through your whole routine. Thank and you. So I'm a happy person right Thank now. You Thank you very, very much for that. Thank me. You're very naughty, Julia. <laughs> And I like comedians who kind of make me slightly on the edge of my seat because I think you're going to be inappropriate. And I think you could have been even more inappropriate. That's what I like about you. Yeah, I like that about me too. Thank you. You are funny. You deliver. You're real. I love